Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here, and today I've got a really cool knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the CRKT and Hogue Redemption, which is apparently modeled after Ken Onion's Dead Man's Hand Custom. I did not know about this knife. It was fun kind of learning about it. Honestly, I would show you a picture of it, but I have to be really careful with copyright images, and there's not a lot available on uh, Google, but you can simply Google that and find the image pretty easily. This is a collaboration between CRKT and Hogue, and it's actually made by Hogue right here in the United States, and the quality definitely shows. This knife uh, was available at least at the, t at the time of this recording, the exact day that I recorded it. I will link it right down below so you guys can check it out. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to CRKT for providing this knife for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I'm sure the first question you have is, did you just deploy that only using the crossbar lock? Is that a crossbar lock? Yeah, it is. I assume it's the Hogue Able lock, right? Unless CRKT has her own thing. Um, but yeah, there's only one way to deploy it, and that's using the crossbar lock. Now, some people are going to find this a little interesting. I have a feeling a lot of people are not going to be super duper pumped about that. I'm going to talk about it, but I need to say this right off the bat. We can split hairs on the definition of gravity knife all day, and that's not going to do anybody any good. I can tell you right now, uh, if you live in an area where gravity knives are both illegal and loosely defined, this could get you in trouble. So uh, bringing, <laughs> bringing a dictionary along or bringing your own, your own idea of what that means along and trying to explain it is probably not the best idea. So um, just know that this style of knife using a crossbar lock to deploy the knife using the swing method or with gravity um, can in some cases be considered a gravity knife. So be careful about that and definitely look up your local laws before you uh, purchase and carry this. In some areas, it's not okay to even own stuff like this. So anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement because this is not a small knife. The overall length, I, I I'm a huge fan of symmetry, symmetrical profiles. So this was immediately very appealing to me. Um, the overall length is coming in at nine inches with a four inch blade. We have a 3.75 inch cutting edge. Now another question people are gonna have is, is that actually uh, sharpened on both sides? No, and it would be a terrible idea if they did because the uh, the unsharpened uh, spine here is exposed enough that you would definitely accidentally touch it periodically. So it's, it's a good idea that they did not do that. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Any uh, custom scales you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So up against the 8010 and the 8020.5, you can see here, this is a long knife. And while it has a thinner profile, it doesn't feel like a thin knife. It's just really long. Um, so when you get it, if you pick this up, the first thing you're going to notice is this is big. So anyway, so let's go ahead and put it up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3, obviously still larger there. Uh, and then finally, let's put it up against the Benchmade Group Tillier, in this case, the Ritter Hogue uh, and the Hogue Deca. So here we have three knives completely and totally manufactured by Hogue right here in the United States. How's the action? Well, the knife runs on bearings, and I got to say the action is very good. And because there's so much blade and because it's so smooth and because the tolerances are very good, it's honestly super easy to manipulate. Now, on that note, do I wish it had a flipper tab or honestly, preferably thumb studs? Yes. If you look at the original custom, and maybe there was only one, maybe he made more than one. I don't know. It's like, it's like the rarest knife ever. I can't find more than one picture of it. Um, it, I think, had a flipper tab. And this is a crossbar lock. That can be a little bit tricky. Um, but having a thumb stud, perhaps an area carved out here with a little spot for a thumb stud on either side might have been a good idea. The problem with that is that it takes away from the aesthetic symmetry. So I think that's why they decided not to. So 
Uh, here's This is my take on it. I love the aesthetic symmetry. I think it looks very, very good. And it is obviously able to be deployed fairly easily. I mean, it's really, if, I, if I'm being honest, it's not really difficult to deploy and, and you know, put away. Um, but I do wish that it had thumb studs just to make it slightly easier to deploy. That's my take. I think you can think that's going to come down to preference, right? Um, let's go ahead and um, do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's really not all that thick. Um, it's honestly fairly thin. And you know what's cool here is that we have legitimate contouring here. Uh, I, I like that. that. That's really nice. They could have easily just squared this off and it would have really cheapened it up. But this is contoured and nicely chamfered in so many areas. And that just puts a huge smile on my face. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. I'm going to be real with you guys. This knife carries really well because it's such an, it's like an elongated pill body. I mean, it really just slips right into the pocket. Uh, and that's nice. It is a little longer than the PM2, just slightly. Definitely longer than the Pair 3. Nowhere near as tall as either. Materials. Um, we are looking at a CPM MagnaCut blade. Now, I can't find anywhere on you know CRKT's website, any of the retailers, <clears throat> I can't find anywhere where they list exactly how this is heat treated. But I will say, Hogue is not a stranger to MagnaCut. And I believe they have listed their MagnaCut hardness on some of their other models that they've used. And they're doing a pretty good job. So... I don't want to assume, I'm just saying the evidence suggests that they are heat treating this within the range that the general community prefers to see MagnaCut at. So there you go. CPM MagnaCut, we have G10 scales. They list it as a steel handle, but I got to be honest with you guys, this bolster here looks like aluminum. It is a separate piece. So they didn't like make the steel frame and then lay the G10 on top of it. This, this to me looks like aluminum, but the magnet sticks to it probably because the nested steel liner underneath is definitely steel. So whatever, either way, it's fine. Uh, I, I think it looks really, really good the way that they did it, but those are the materials there. Weight on this knife. Remember, we are looking at a four inch blade here. So the weight coming in at 4.8 ounces is not bad. It is definitely still on the larger uh, heavier side. It's going to be labeled that way for some people. Um, but uh, this really wasn't a problem for me to carry. I really was just kind of amazed at how much blade I was getting uh, for how compact of an object I was slipping into my pocket. So fans of much smaller knives, this might be a little bit problematic for you. But for most people wearing regular pants, jeans, stuff like that, probably not going to be that much of an issue. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm going to get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel or the pinned comment in the comment section. So the pivot is almost certainly a T8, and that is, oh, you know what? I it's, it's, it's moving just a bit, I think. Not the pivot, but I mean, it might actually be a T10. Let's take a look here. Oh yeah, we have a T10 pivot. And then the rest of these screws, except for the pocket clip screws, you can actually see here, those are gonna be T6. The rest of these are T8 and those hold the scales on. So you are gonna have um, a few extra screws to take off. Not that big of a deal. Really the biggest challenge is gonna be working around the uh, able lock or the axis lock uh, with Omega Springs. Anybody who's taken apart a Benchmade knife knows that that can be a little bit tricky. It's certainly not impossible, but it is not nearly as simple as taking apart a simple detent ball, liner lock, or frame lock. Um, so just expect that that's gonna be a little bit tricky, but absolutely doable and nowhere near the most complicated thing that I've ever taken apart. Uh, I want to say I've successfully disassembled 20 or 30 axis lock knives, um, which really isn't that many in the grand scheme of, you know, being a, uh, a knife enthusiast, right? Um, many of you, I'm sure, have disassembled far more. Um, so just keep that in mind if you're new. can be a little bit tricky, but still not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and measure the blade stock thickness on this knife. I think I'm just going to lay it like this and try and get a hold of that um, thick part. And the reason is, is because that thickness is carried out about the, it starts to taper about here. So the general thickness, the blade stock is coming in at 150 thousandths there. So a little bit on the thick side for sure. All right, meat and potatoes time. This is a beautiful knife. 
Uh, I love how this looks. Uh, as a, uh, you guys know, I am a design reviewer, and I can't help but let my own, um, you know, aesthetic bias come out in these reviews a little bit. Um, so, in, in terms of the overall look of this, I, I just love this. Um, I uh, we don't see an enormous number of knives that are capturing this this t perfect level of symmetry and at the same time bringing some really cool style here. I think one of the coolest accents to this knife is this right here. It's almost this traditional knife sort of shield inlay. It's not really a shield, but it reminds me of, you know, traditional lives, knives that have these inlays here. I also like in the bolster, they've got these two little lines here. It's just kind of an, an additional accent um, uh, and just highlight to the separation between this bolster and the G10. The G10 is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> it looks so good. I mean, they really kind of captured this combination of traditional meats um, you know, modern tactical, and it, it really does work. Um, the blade, I'm, I'm gonna, I know you guys wanna know if that line goes all the way out perfectly to the tip, and it doesn't, I'll tell you why, it's intentional. It's because we have one sharpened edge and the other is not. So we have to carry that sharpened area out to the tip, so this line is going to not quite be perfectly symmetrical, but it is absolutely even on both sides. We'll say that the cutting bevel starts out slightly more narrow here than it is. You can kind of see it gets a little bit wider. That's not that big of a deal, and generally Hogue does a good job, so it's possible, even though um, CRKT sent me this one directly, uh, it's possible that uh, yours will be absolutely perfect and mine is just a little bit weird, but honestly, I'm not really that upset about it. The stone wash on the blade is simple, but it's really nice. It says CRKT on one side, and then well, unfortunately, we have a whole, like a code over here, and then it says onion design. No printing of Magna Cut anywhere, which is really kind of surprising. I would have traded that code out for Magna Cut if we have something there, but okay. So how does it cut? Well, as you can imagine, it's not the best in the world. I mean, we have a relatively thick stock of Magna Cut, and it, it, it tapers down to an edge that can cut and then can slice. And honestly, it's, you know, it, it's okay. It's, 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 it's decent. Um, but you're not, it, this isn't going to be a, uh, you know, a knife that you're going to perform <laughs> surgery with or anything like that. Um, but it will cut and it will absolutely poke. You know, it'll do what you need it to do. Cutting paper isn't really going to prove much. Um, you just don't have, you know, an edge that's perfectly suited for like maximum slicing efficiency. I think that's probably obvious by the look at this, right? But just so you know, it's all right. And Hogue did a great job sharpening it. I mean, Hogue does a great edge. Assuming they did the edge, I would, I mean, they made the thing. Why would they send it off to have it sharpened, right? Um, but yeah, there's no sharpening choil. It just ends right here. Some people like that. Some people don't. I don't think they did a terrible job, but there is a little bit of a little bit of a change right there, but okay. Ergonomically, it's a big, long pill body. I think my favorite thing is the fact that they put an absolutely magnificent pocket clip on it, nested into the G10, nested screws. We have a shorter clip with a slight bill, and it is symmetrical and able to be mounted on the other side for left-handed carry. This is exactly how I, I wouldn't change a single thing. That's exactly what they should have done. I'm so glad that they did it. The tension on the Omega Springs is about normal. I mean, honestly, it really doesn't feel any different than like my Ritter Hogue. Um, it doesn't feel sloppy or goofy or anything like that. And the lockout is absolute. But Hogue has never really had an issue with their able lock. Excuse me while I wipe some fingerprints off of this. So there's no reason to think that this would, would be, you know, any worse than any of their um, uh, other able locks. I mean, they, I think they've done a great job. In fact, I got to be honest with you, I think that Hogue being one of the first uh, to do this style of lock after the patent ended, uh, it's funny, we still have people going, that's a copy of Benchmade's Axis Lock. If you didn't know, that patent ended, so they can legally do this. I think that Hogue was uh, one of the first companies to do a better axis lock. I mean, followed by many other companies. But Hogue, initially, I think, um, did the first, like, wow, that's definitely better than Benchmade's axis lock, axis lock. So, yeah, very cool. And it's very easy to manipulate, very easy to grab onto. I mean, honestly, there's so much handle room on this thing. The uh, it, Despite it being the only means of deployment, it works, right? I mean, you you can do it. Would it be made better with a thumb stop? Definitely. Would it be made better with a flipper tab? Sure, if they could get it to work perfectly with the axis lock, which would be a little bit tricky, but sure, right? 
Um, so yeah, can you like whip this thing open? I mean, yeah, you totally can. But I mean, then again, like, can I do that with my Hogue? I can absolutely do that with my Hogue. Can I do it with my uh, Demco AD 20.5? I mean, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit harder, but I can absolutely do it. Can I do it with my Benchmade bug out? I can absolutely do it with my Benchmade bug out. How about the Hogue Deca? I can do it with that too. So. It's only made easier by the fact that this knife is it has such a long, heavy blade. But uh, initially, like the initial, like what's holding it in, the tension holding it in, it's about the same. It feels about the same as the all of these. It's just made a little bit easier by the fact that the blade is longer. So there you go. I mean, I don't know what you want to do with that information, but there it is. We got a filler tab. I don't think it looks bad. It's the same color as the G10. We have a little backspacer here, a little bit of uh, like uh, uh, texturing right there. I think that's fine for those of you reverse grip tactical, you know, if like, let's say, you know, you're like, oh, it's time to open the mail and this is how you go at it. <laughs> Darn these bills. <laughs> I don't know. I, okay. Um, or whatever else you use it for. In and out of the pocket, it's an absolute dream. The pocket clip is just amazing it's 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 a simple clip but man it's just a functional perfect clip this is exactly the style clip that i like and it looks good with the knife it doesn't need to be something over complicated it just looks really really good like i said the bolster is nice you can see those little lines they're separating and creating that contouring on the aluminum without it actually being the same type of contouring as this right we just have a bunch of it's almost like a like nintendo 64 graphics contouring right <laughs> <laughs> but it looks good. I like it. The pivot looks good. Everything about this knife, the fit and finish is beautiful. And the inlay work on this is wonderful on both sides. Really, really good. Just a huge fan of this. Like I said, no blade play up, down, left, or right. This thing can stick if you really kind of whip it out. That time, not really. Let's see if I can, yeah, like right there, if I like really jam it with both fingers. But most of the time, that's not going to be how you're opening it. You're going to open it like this, right? And that doesn't really yield any, yeah, not really. It's really only when I grab it and like force it into that position, then I get a little bit of stick. But that's that's obviously not what you're going to be doing. Um, we have, uh, like I said, no blade play, no pivot lash, nice and smooth in here, really smooth. And then if you can see the actual tip, it looks slightly off, but I've already had to adjust this once. You know what? Is it even? No. I noticed it was off and I just tightened down the pivot and it went back. But you know what? I don't think it actually is. I think it's dead perfect. So this is going to be a niche item, right? This is definitely going to be a collector's piece, but it's a functional collector's piece. If you don't care about the lack of a thumb stud, which... My honest opinion, again, is that it should be there. It would take away from the aesthetic, but it should be there. But then again, it does kind of create this uniqueness about this knife, right? You had a thumb stud, and it's, eh, that's a lot more like everything else we've got on the market. This is an interesting combination of things. CRKT and Hogue collaborating to create an apparently legendary custom knife made by Ken Onion right here in the United States with MagnaCut. We have a beautiful symmetrical design and arguably they made a gravity knife. That's interesting. To the average person looking for a utilitarian USA made everyday knife, you have a lot of options out there that are gonna be better and Hogue makes a lot of them. CRKT makes a lot of them, not, as, not really in the United States. I mean, they make some things, right? You get a lot more options there. Now, if you want something a little more interesting, if you're like, yeah, you know, listen, hey, Complex, me, as well as pretty much everybody else watching your channel, we get a ton of knives that are utilitarian. I want something that's a little more saucy. I'll sacrifice a little bit of, you know, convenience and cutting geometry uh, for something that's just a, got a little bit more zest. This might be it. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, the price tag, 225 bucks, seriously, 100%. I thought I was going to look this up and it was going to say 300 this was on Blade HQ for $225. Now, that's a lot of money. And if, especially if you're new to the knife world and you're like, what? I can go down to Walmart right now and buy... Yeah, like, <laughs> the most common phrase ever uttered, right? When you step foot into this knife world, believe me, I get it. I said the same thing. But we're talking USA. We're talking Hogue USA. I don't think the price is bad at all. If we're looking at realistic competition, and again, no, that does not mean the $40 knives in the Walmart display. Those are made in China. 
And certainly, even if some of them are made in the United States, like, for example, the Kershaw Blur, which is just forever a part of Walmart, it's not made the same way. You got a lot more going into something like this. Magna Cut Steel, much bigger, really interesting bolster and G10 with the inlay combination, right? Yeah, a little bit more complicated. I, uh, I'm not mad at that price tag at all. I think this is really, really cool. And, you know, I, I have a feeling once these are gone, they're just gone. I, I, I don't know if it's actually a limited piece or not. If you want something fun and different to carry around that's USA made, that's based on kind of, a, you know, like a, like a Ken Onion legacy, this is really, really cool. Um, if you uh, want something really cool to add to your collection, also really, really cool. If you just want straight up utility and none of the extra pomp and frill means anything to you, this isn't for you. And it honestly wasn't designed for you. They didn't, this, that might not, you might not be the target audience. So I want to be clear about that. I'm not openly recommending this knife to everyone. You kind of just have to ask yourself who you are. But for the people who are interested in stuff like this, you will really like this. It's cool. Um, but, uh, let me know what you think about the deployment, uh, feature, whether you prefer it or not. I'd be interested to hear. That's going to be pretty much it today. Um, this is actually going to go in two playlists. This is going to go, well, I'm sorry, it's going to go in one playlist. It's, it's not going to go in my recommended knives playlist because I honestly just cannot recommend this to everybody, but it is going to go in my favorite knives of all time playlist because I, you guys know I'm a sucker for symmetry. I like bigger knives, right? I love, I, I like Hogue. I like USA made stuff. This is just cool. I like it. Um, that's going to be, that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please. Make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.